How do you create these tab bar controls with just HTML and CSS? Well, you can do it with CSS has, and I love it when you all tag me in these things. So, got tagged in this one, enlighten us please, I got you, and then, yeah, keep those gifts coming because they amuse me a lot. So, how would we create this? Well, on the face of it, it is a set of uh, radio inputs. That's what I would go with. So, we've got these, this is the markup. Uh, we've got two sets here. We've got one with three tabs and one with two. And realistically, you're probably not going to go much higher than that. Like, if you get into like 10, you probably want to go for a select list um, with some options. Even five or six is probably too many. So, this is quite a good example where the max you're probably going to get to is maybe like four, um, starting with two, three, four. So, here we've got a two and a three. Um, the markup's pretty basic. It's yeah, two divs for the tabs, input type radio with the labels for each. Um, yeah, and for that you just need the names and the IDs. Creatively, I've just appended a two to the second uh, set of tabs there. So, <laughs> but let's take a look at them and see how they look. So here's our UI has tabs, and you can hover over them and click them, and the little control moves where you want it to. Cool, right? Pretty straightforward, but what does the CSS for that look like? Right, so if we dig in, we have our tabs, and they have a height, and they're just a, they just display grid, right? Grid or overflow column, and 1FR, and it just makes split nicely. And then here comes the magic trick. So the magic trick is that you want to set the active tab based on the index of the checked item within the tabs. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> you're going to say tabs has something that's checked, and if it's nth of type 1, you know the active index is 0. Alternatively, if tabs has a check that's nth of type 3 or 2, then you know that the active index is going to be 1 or 2. It's 0 based, remember. Similarly, um, you need to know how many tabs you have in the control to know how far to translate the tab. So you can count how many elements you've got within the tabs using has as well. So we know that if tabs has an input that's nth of type 2, then it's it's got 2, right? The count is 2. But what if it has an input nth of type 4? Well, you know the count is 4, and here the cascade comes into effect, right? Because the last rule is going to be the active one. So four, if there's four, it's going to be four, if it's three, it's three. You're not going to have two and then get caught out. Cool. So you've got those updating custom properties. And then what happens? Well, all you have to do is translate the piece across. You just translate that piece where it needs to go. And we're doing this with a pseudo element on the tab control itself. So here you go, tabs after. And the width is calc 100% over the count. So if it's tab bar of 2, you know the pseudo is going to be 50%, right? It's going to be 50% of the width. And then you translate it by the active index. So if the active index is the second item, it's going to be 1. So you translate by 100%. puts it on the second item. Um, we can mess around with this actually in DevTools. I can show you. So, if I was to come in here and pump up the dev tools, grab the pseudo element, there you can see the after, and then we'll squeeze this up a little bit. So, we know the active at this point is zero, right? But if I change this, in fact, if I just write it in here, um, sorry, I have a funky keyboard on this MacBook. One, there we go. Two, and you can see it's just going over, right? It's just going wherever it wants, because I'm going out of bounds. I could even go fractions, okay, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, <laughs> but it's all powered by that custom property. It just moves that pseudo element around, and each time you press one of these labels for the input type radio, that updates the checked status of the input, and it moves based on those custom properties. And that, that's really the trick to it. There's not, there's not much else to it. Um, a nice little trick is the mixed blend mode. 
on the label. Um, that gives you a nice effect when you slow things down. So if we go into animations and we set them to 10% um, and watch. It should, oh no, we need to turn that off. You can see there, as it goes across, watch the text as it... It's kind of nice. It like diffs it as it goes across. But yeah, that is essentially how you do tab bar controls with CSS has alone and HTML and you're just using form controls. Nice thing is here as well, you're going to get the, the keyboard control so you get left and right arrow keys and that will work as expected. However, someone did ask, what if my tab bars aren't the same size? What if they're different sizes? And that's completely valid, right? Like, they might be different sizes. Personally, I prefer them to all be the same size because I think when they're different sizes, it can sort of like uh, visually con you into making a decision. Like, oh, I want to pick the biggest, the biggest, you know, like, I think subconsciously your mind goes in those kind of directions with some of these things. But there is a way to do that too. So this is a CSS only version too, but this uses anchor positioning. And unfortunately, anchor positioning isn't in every browser just yet. But it will be. So this one only works in Chrome, but it does work as expected. And anchor positioning is pretty clever. Um, essentially what happens with anchor positioning is you can tell or you can use the positions of other elements within the DOM and their width so you can get that insert positioning and use it to lay out other items, which is really cool. So it's the same um, the same concept, we're taking the pseudo element on the tabs, but we have an anchor set for each con like piece of the uh, each tab on the control. And then when we change the checked, you can see here, no, nope, that's the anchor names being defined. Uh, we change the anchor default to the active, and that is being updated here. So we could probably move this down, to be honest. It would be clearer if it was down here. So yeah, this is how it works. Each label has an anchor name set, and it's choice one, choice two, choice three, choice four. You'd probably use like JSX or something to um, define these. And then if checked, inf of type one, then you know active is choice one. Type three is gonna be choice three. And that updates the anchor default. And you use that to position the thing. So anchor default var active. Start with choice one as the default, and then you set the anchor positioning. So we know it's going to be top. Um, we set the position, like the absolute positioning. So we know insert is going to be zero at the top, and then the right will be the active uh, labels right, and then the bottom will be zero, and the left will be the active labels left. And it's kind of cool because it will just work out the sizes for you because it's just like magnetizing to the right point, which is yeah pretty neat. And then the same trick with uh, the mixed blend mode. And that, that's kind of it for like the anchoring version. This one will be sweet when it lands. Um, Going to be a lot of cool demos I think people will make and just yeah, really practical use cases for it. But yeah, that is how you do um, tab bar controls with CSS and has alone. And in the future with CSS anchor positioning for those differing width labels. Um, there was one other thing um, in the original demo you could drag the the active tab around like you could just move it slightly add a little bit of javascript just to add it in maybe we'll do something on the the magnetic um demo that i did a little while back but yeah you just add a little snippet of javascript and add that elasticity in and then it acts like an enhancement right so yeah pretty cool uh, check it out any questions let me know stay awesome